Akbar review of chapter 8 uh, and talk about respiration in which we take sugars use oxygen and come up with carbon dioxide water and something we don't usually see in a chemical equation but this is really the reason we're doing it is energy and when we see energy here I want you thinking high energy electrons and we're gonna take those high energy electrons and make ATP out of them so when you convert sugar and oxygen to carbon dioxide and water uh, it, it's just like photosynthesis was not a one-step process it's not one chemical reaction you just can't put sugar water uh, bubble oxygen through it and get carbon dioxide water and energy uh, high energy electrons uh, so the steps that go there are three steps to go through the process to completely get all the carbon dioxide all the water and all the energy out of sugar and they're broken down into two kinds of reactions the aerobic reactions need oxygen and we need oxygen if we're going to get complete breakdown of glucose to carbon dioxide water and high energy electrons but the first part of the process of getting this going in the cell is an anaerobic process or reaction this doesn't need oxygen so we can get some energy we don't get any carbon dioxide from it uh, but we do get some high energy electrons from it by just taking glucose sugars and breaking them in two we don't get any carbon dioxide from it uh, so we're not getting full amount but we are able to make some uh, energy from that and we'll, that will be in some cases used in fermentation but we're not going to focus on that today so that part that doesn't require oxygen no need for oxygen we don't get any carbon dioxide from it uh, we don't get any water from it we do get high energy electrons from it and we get uh, pyruvate which we'll talk about in a second is called uh, glycolysis or glycolysis and glycolysis is breaking of sugar in two so you take a six carbon sugar and break it into two pieces whenever you break a chemical bond you release chemical energy so we are going to release chemical energy here and we can make a few ATPs with uh, the process of glycolysis because you can do this without oxygen without mitochondria this all happens in cytoplasm this will allow cells that don't have enough oxygen at the time or don't have mitochondria to still get ATP by breaking down sugars they just won't break them down completely into carbon dioxide water and all the high energy electrons possible if you're going to do that you need to go to the next step and the next step is going to involve the Krebs cycle and the Krebs cycle happens in mitochondria and it's going to ultimately need oxygen this is where we take the product of glycolysis the pyruvate and break it into individual carbon dioxides so 
glycolysis gave us pyruvate, the Krebs cycle is going to give us all the carbon dioxides. For each pyruvate, there will be three carbon dioxides generated. That's not a simple break one off, break one off, break one off. We know we've gone through the intermediates and the steps before, and you, you learned about them uh, earlier in the year, but it's still the release of carbon dioxide. So the Krebs cycle is going to be where the carbon dioxide comes into play. Now, we don't get high energy, uh, we do get high energy electrons produced here, and we're going to use those in the next part but we didn't get any water produced from the Krebs cycle. So the Krebs cycle generated carbon dioxide and high energy electrons. To use those high energy electrons, we use an electron transport system. And that electron transport system Whoops. uses high energy electrons to make ATP and that's ultimately the energy we want to get for the cell. So we've used the Krebs cycle, we've made carbon dioxides and we've generated high energy electrons in the Krebs cycle and then in the electron transport system we have generated, uh, we have use those high energy electrons to make ATP. And we have a need for oxygen. And that need for oxygen is to accept the high energy electrons when we're done with them. And when they do, they go back to make water. And I say they go back to make water because if you look at the photosynthesis reaction, which is the opposite of this, that water served as a source of oxygens. Those carbon dioxides taken out of the air served as the basis to build sugar. So we're really doing photosynthesis in reverse and we're getting a lot of ATPs from it. Uh, we can get 36 to 38 generated. But we do it by a three-step process. Glycolysis is an anaerobic process. It does not need oxygen doesn't need mitochondria. It happens in the cytoplasm. Uh, so in glycolysis, the sugar is broken into two three-carbon molecules. Those two three-carbon molecules make their way to the mitochondria, where they are broken down into individual carbon dioxides. So this is where we generate our carbon dioxides. And the big product we get from the Krebs cycle are high energy electrons and those high energy electrons are used in an electron transport system to make ATP and in the process the water is generated that we see over here. So electron transport system is a source of water. The Krebs cycle is a source of carbon dioxide uh, and the high energy electrons for the electron transport system came from the process in the Krebs cycle. All right, that sums up respiration. I want to do a quick comparison of respiration and photosynthesis for you. Uh, that kind of wraps up the chapter and it really explains why we have, why plants make up the base of uh, food chains. So if we look at photosynthesis, we are seeing C, just the chemical reaction. CO2 plus H2O gave us sugar and oxygen. I'll just leave that photo. Now in respiration, sugar plus oxygen gave us CO2 plus H2O plus energy. So uh, respiration. So we look up here at a plant. Plant uh, 
it brings in carbon dioxide and water carbon dioxide from the leaves water from the roots and then we do have to have an energy input and that energy input whoops I did something there comes from the Sun So we didn't write energy in the first part of this equation, but it's there. It came from the sun. So carbon dioxide plus water plus sunlight energy can, in a plant can give us sugar produced by the Calvin cycle and oxygen produced by the light reactions. Now that plant can take that oxygen and that sugar and send it to its mitochondria and in that mitochondria, or in the cytoplasm, the sugar will split into two three-carbon molecules. And then those three-carbon molecules will go into the uh, pyruvates, will go into the mitochondria of the plant. And with oxygen at the end of the electron transport chain, be completely converted back to carbon dioxide, water, carbon dioxide from the Krebs cycle, water from the electron transport system, and the energy will be made into ATPs. It will start out as high energy electrons coming from the Krebs cycle and be used to make ATPs for the cell, the plant to do what it needs to do to run its metabolism. So you can see that both of these could happen within a cell. So chlor uh, within a plant cell, this part would happen in a chloroplast, this one in mitochondria but if you're an animal you don't have a chloroplast you don't have any mechanism of making sugar so you have to get sugar from your diet and the only place to get sugar ultimately is from organisms that can make it such as plants called producers or autotrophs now you don't necessarily have to eat an autotroph to get the sugar you could eat another animal that has eaten a plant because animals store the sugar too so we don't have to eat plants directly but at least indirectly at the bottom of all food chains uh, and the relationships between organisms that we're going to get into starting tomorrow all deal with the fact that plants are able to make sugars and we need sugars to make ATP all right, uh, I'll be putting a formative up today, and then tomorrow we'll start with a, uh, a little uh, kind of back to the old format of uh, slides, videos, and uh, these chalk talks along with uh, formative assessments. Um, all right.